Uh, because I recently gave this machine a full tune-up, I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll go over uh, why this is still my favorite Dyson Upright, even after owning it for 10 years and owning many models since. Uh, so, this was their first machine that they designed specifically for American homes and for cleaning uh, thick wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, uh, which was really popular at the time. We had a lot, uh, there was a trend where, like, a type of carpet called frise was getting really popular in the U.S., and now we tend to have more homes with uh, hard floors and area rugs and a combination of the two. But 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. Uh, and uh, to, uh, to make, at the time too, uh, Dyson was dealing with a lot of pushback from uh, like publications like Consumer Reports saying that their products weren't, uh, they weren't great carpet cleaners. And uh, that was true with the DC-07 especially. The DC-14 was a little better, but this one was a huge jump. And uh, one of the, the main reason for that is because this is, uh, it has a much, much better brush roll than what they put in previous model Dysons. Uh, it's a huge improvement, and I'll show that to you. Um, I would say to this day, it's still their best carpet cleaner. And it's a two-motor upright. It's actually their second two-motor upright that they ever made. Uh, the first was the Dyson DC-17. Um, so you had a much, much better brush roll and as a result, the machine was able to pick up much more fine dust. So this thing picks up dirt <laughs> generally a lot faster than other Dyson vacuums. So, uh, especially on carpets. Anyways, a lot of them now are fantastic on hard floors and are pretty good on carpets. Still not as good as this. Um, but to, to make sure that the filtration system could handle uh, all the extra dirt that the machine was picking up, it's their first upright that used what was called the Level 3 Root Cyclone. Uh, technology and what that was uh, instead of two stages like most Dysons this one this is their first upright where the separation system was in three stages and I'll show you that in a little closer detail soon um, along with that um, they also had a massive upgrade on the tools the hose and wand setup is a lot easier to use it's a lot better it's still my favorite Dyson upright hose setup even though a lot of the new ones are similar um, this one the hose and wand are nicer, the, the tools are nice, and the machine when you're using the tools is a lot more stable, the hose is nice and long. So there's a lot of reasons I like that. Um, the machine is also very versatile. That's what I've always liked about Dyson's or modern uprights versus uh, some older machines. Uh, with this machine, you can clean a room top to bottom with just what's on the vacuum. You've got excellent tools to dust you know, from the, from the ceiling down or clean your stairs, uh, and then the machine can do does a very good job on both carpeting and bare floors so you can clean an entire room top to bottom with just what's on the vacuum and i love that it's still something that's a lot of vacuum cleaner companies struggle <laughs> struggle with <laughs> they usually don't have as good of tools they generally don't and uh, anyways that's why this one has stuck around i've used it uh for a long time i've used this thing for severe heavy duty cleaning i've used it in garages basements uh, uh, you know, construction, cleaning up like drywall dust, things like that. And it's been a trooper. So anyways, let me go over some of this stuff in closer detail. Now for a long time, vacuum cleaners traditionally had a suction motor that would also drive the belt to drive the brush. Now this is one of Dyson's, this is Dyson's second two motor upright. Now what makes such a key difference in this machine is this extremely aggressive brush bar. Dyson calls them brush bars. We call them brush rolls or agitators in the U.S. Uh, but the brush bar, uh, as you can see, the the brushes are generous and, uh, and, and they're extremely stiff. They don't actually protrude too far from the sole plate, but they're so stiff that they, uh, they do an excellent job. And... Uh, Inside here, you do have a second motor that drives this. It has, it has a geared belt, so you still have a lifetime belt, a feature I take for granted nowadays, but I consider essential. I like that a lot. Um, but this extremely aggressive brush bar gave the machine fantastic carpet cleaning performance. It did a wonderful job. And on some, uh, on some types of carpeting, people complained that the brush bar was too aggressive and would uh, lift up carpet or would pull up like carpet fluff and uh, and allegedly like damage carpeting. Um, I've never had a problem with that, and I've used this on a variety of flooring over the years. I've actually I've used this so much I've replaced this brush bar twice, uh, just recently uh, actually. Uh, 
because it's gotten such a workout over the years. And I've used this thing for extreme cleaning. And uh, and it's been a trooper. It's held up extremely well. Both motors are running just fine. And it's doing what it needs to do. Um, but yeah, uh, the brush bar, the bristles are extremely stiff. They don't protrude from the sole plate too far. But they, uh, because of how stiff they are... Um, they really, uh, they really agitate the carpet. The machine pulls up a ton of fine dust. And uh, it has a squeegee on the back. This was very um, uncommon at the time, you know, 10, 11 years ago. Uh, and that prevents scattering of dirt on hard floors and also prevents dirt kicked up on carpet from getting behind it. So basically, once it hits the squeegee, it gets sucked into the hose and into the bin. And that's a great feature. I like the way this is designed where it's kind of folded back. They, I don't think they did this on another one, but they, it's an early design. And the, the way that this is set up, it still glides really nicely. The, the squeegee doesn't prevent the machine from gliding across carpeting. Um, but it still serves its purpose. They did a really good job with that. So, as a result, the extremely street, the, the extremely stiff brushes uh, made a dramatic difference uh, in terms of how the machine picked up. This is night and day compared to the DC-07 or DC-14. This is much, much closer to its competitor at the time, which was like the carpet cleaning champion in the U.S., which was the bagged Hoover wind tunnel. Um, and this is much, much closer to that. But you get all the convenience of a kick-ass bagless upright that's easy to dump and has the Dyson convenience where the tools are awesome and uh, it can do hard floors and carpet. So they really nailed it. Now, <clears throat> as far as issues with this setup, there were a few faults. Uh, dirt, it was notorious. There's a gap here so that dirt can get through to the hose on this side. But there was an issue where dirt would get into the belt area. And then you would have to periodically take the sole plate off, and which is easy enough. Uh, take, the, take the bottom plate off and clean out this area, which would build up with dirt. Because unfortunately, Dyson's going to Dyson and they're going to cheap out in their own ways. And the seal around this cavity here was not good enough and um and it would let dust into that area and some brush roll motors fried because of it and uh and it caused issues and and belts would break and things like that but um you know as long as you as long as you take care of it and keep up on that stuff it's not an issue again i've had this machine nearly since it was new i've had this probably for nine ten years now and uh uh as long as you as long as you keep up on it, it it's it's not a big problem um now, again, now that we have a much, much better brush roll, Dyson went a step further with this because they knew they'd never done this with one of their machines before. So how are we going to back that up? How can we still maintain the no loss of suction claims that have made us, you know, billions of dollars at this point? Uh, we got to make sure that the rest of the machine can accommodate that. So then the cyclonic filtration system comes into play. If you have if the machine is a capable of picking up much, much more dirt at the same time, you got to make sure that the cyclone pack can accommodate all that dust. So they, that's exactly what they did. They went a step further with it. As I mentioned, one of the big steps up on this model was the level three root cyclone pack. Uh, this was a huge improvement over the uh, previous multi-cyclonic packs or dual cyclone uh, tech that Dyson had patented and was using in their machines before. But again, because the brush roll is so improved, they wanted to make sure that the separation system could handle it. And the way it works, it's in three stages. I actually recently took this thing all apart and washed it. I've never done that in the 10 years that I've owned it. It never clogged, because I always took care of it and kept an eye out for the, uh, the problem areas on this. Um, but I decided to take it apart and wash it. And it actually wasn't that hard to do. It wasn't bad. So uh, it was kind of cool too, because once it was all apart, I could see how the thing actually worked. Uh, and it was, yeah, easier to understand. It's pretty cool. So that just dumps out like any other Dyson, easy, to, easy enough to empty. Sometimes stuff will get caught up in the top. And I'm going to remove this. Just unclip it there. There we go. Set the bin aside. The, the bin is bigger than most newer Dysons. So there it is. Uh, this pack has what's called a core separator. And then there's the other root cyclones at the top. So first, uh, large debris ends up in the clear bin and it gets a lot of it. Um, any finer dust that's able to make its way into here is first forced through, I don't know if you can see that, that center cyclone there, it's first forced through what's called the core separator. There's actually four entrances inside the shroud. 
but all the dirt first has to go through this this one cyclone which is only about four inches long it's actually pretty small i was surprised uh but that makes a huge difference after that the cleaner air that exits that core separator then goes up here and is split and goes through all of these uh, root cyclones and there are eight of them so the system is or it forces it through i guess nine cyclones but then actually the outer cyclone too so i guess 10. but anyways after that all the the clean air that exits uh is very very clean uh this was it was a massive improvement so as a result it took let me see if i can get this in the shot There's the filter there. It took the filter forever to get dirty. And this is actually a much nicer filter than they were using before. Uh, I recently washed this too, so this, is, this, was, this was dirty. Um, yeah, but anyways, uh, this uses a really good seal. It's got a fat gasket there. I think this was the first upright that used this type of setup. And so because it was completely sealed, very little dust would make its way to the huge HEPA filter that's on the right there. Um, and this was washable, and it would, and it takes them forever to get dirty. I think the last time I washed this was two or three years ago, and uh, yeah, so it, it takes a long time before these these clog, which is excellent. So it was a huge step up. Now, the system itself. Whoops, let me pull this out. It did have one inherent flaw. So. A problem that happened on these, especially the earlier ones, this gasket here initially was a lot flimsier. It wasn't nearly as thick as this one that's on here now. This is the this is the newer redesign pack. Uh, Dyson started giving these away under warranty. They had to give away a lot of them because what would happen is this gasket here would get pushed up and it would create a gap here. When you have a gap in the filtration system, it doesn't work at all. It out, everything has to move in a certain order. All the air has to flow a certain way. So let me put this back together. So all of the air had to flow a certain way. And the reason that gasket would get pushed up is that it would get caught on these little rubber gaskets here. And even now, I can feel them, I can feel them touching. Over time, people would notice these little, these little gaskets would push this big one up, create a gap, and then the whole system would fail. And when it would fail, none of the cyclone separation worked. It just pulled dirt right through the top of all of these cyclones. And then it would pack this filter and then it would pack the filter with dirt and hair and stuff like that. You'd have to take this all apart, which actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was actually pretty easy, but you'd have to take it apart. But a lot of people didn't notice that. Dyson did redesign these, so it's a lot less likely to happen on the newer pack. But as long as you're careful with that, you can avoid that major flaw completely. Uh, another key feature on this model that was a huge improvement, definite plus, was the, uh, the hose and wand setup. The tools on this vacuum cleaner are excellent. Uh, Dyson was really still trying to um, actively improve the system, and they went all out. So this was the first one uh, where, their first up right along with the DC-18, where the wand and the handle release in one action. You don't have to push any buttons or anything like that. Um, you, it just releases in one action, and it also goes back in that way. So it's really easy. So you just lift up, and bam, and there you go. It's disconnected. Let me get the cord out of the way those pesky cords uh, and the grip goes with it so then you've got a nice grip for cleaning uh, I actually made a mess over here on my couch <laughs> for the sake of this and uh, what I also like about this is that you've got a really long reach uh, like most Dyson's but with this one uh, the hose is longer than it is on most new ones and on the ones that followed up the other really nice thing is that the hose here swivels uh, so on newer Dysons, a lot of times the hoses will kind of get coiled up and tangled up in themselves because they don't swivel here. And that was why I didn't like the setup on the DC-25, the 27, the 28 uh, as much. It swivels again on the newer ones, but it's uh, but th this one's just a lot more stable. It's nicer. The wand's metal. Not that the plastic wands have ever been an issue, but really it's just that they don't have a nice grip like this one. Uh, and then when you're done cleaning, and the cool thing too is that you've got the wand with it. You've got tons and tons of reach, so you can easily go around and clean a whole room top to bottom with just what's on the machine. And uh, yeah, and then when you're done, all you do is drop this back into place, and there you go. And then you're back in upright mode. You just it's uh, it's 
<laughs> Very easy. So I, I always really liked that. I use this thing all the time as a result. I really like the tools on it. Um, let me disconnect this, and then I'll show you. Sorry, I, since I'm holding the camera, I've got to. It's going to be a little messy for a second. I'm going to disconnect the wand, set it aside, grab my trusty dusting brush. Normally I'd use an upholstery tool, but since my this couch is leather, and turn this on. So power button and the brush roll control right at the top. Go ahead and turn on. It's got great suction. It's not the quietest. But it's got great suction. Put a dust pan here. This is a little overdue, to be honest. Okay. There you go. Okay. Picked all that up. So now, I have no qualms about the attachments. I think they're awesome. I think they're largely excuse me, I think they're largely unmatched. I can think of very few modern vacuums that have a system or a setup that's as good, and that's why I keep going back to this one. One of the other reasons, aside from the fact that it does a great job on carpets and hard floors. So now, let's show that off. I'm gonna set up, uh, make a big mess, and we'll go from there. <laughs> All right, so this is probably a mistake. I just dumped a bunch of sawdust uh, onto the floor from a, from a project, and it made a huge cloud of sawdust in the room. Uh, but also, I went to empty this, and this is just something I noticed. So I went to empty this, uh, this is the Dyson Small Ball. This is, I just got this thing. And dumps out, very common on these because so, it's so, um, the, the space for the dirt in there is so narrow. Went to shake it, and this bottom plastic part, yep, dropped right off. Now that is something that would not happen on the DC-17 if you needed to shake it out over a trash can. But this one, you're going to have to do that all the time, or you're going to have to remove it and clean it off. So I guess it's easier if you can just shake it off, but uh, that's kind of one of those things on newer Dysons. They call it lean engineering, but it's just, it's cheaper. Anyways. All right, so I've made a huge mess, and I've got the DC-17 here. Uh, by default, it always sets to carpet. All you have to do is turn it on, you put your foot in the front, and lower the handle. So let's go ahead and do that. When you first turn it on, the suction's at the top like any Dyson. Lower the handle. Alright, and then the second motor just turned on. Make it all. Yeah, this is a big rattler, so there we go. It's very easy to push, even though my carpet's kind of flush. Uh, it pulls itself right along. And it's kind of like a like a brush propelled effect. Noisy, but. There you go. I mean, I think it did a great job. Uh, it took a couple passes for some of the larger stuff, but the sawdust it gobbled right up. You can see all that built up in there. There's actually the wrappers got caught in the top there, and it made kind of a mess. So I'll clean that out, and then I'm going to try this on bare floors. Okay, for the next part of this demo, I've made a huge mess in my kitchen. And uh, again, this is, um, this is sawdust from a previous uh, project. And I decided to save it just for just for this kind of stuff. So I dumped it out. Actually, that part that was stuck in the top that fell out really easily. I didn't have to I didn't have to take the bin apart or anything. It just dropped out, which was nice. Um, some of the larger stuff I did remove. The way that this one works on hard floors, it will it should catch all the smaller dust without any issue. And most smaller things, like smaller than maybe like a popcorn kernel, 
it shouldn't have problems with, but larger stuff, because it doesn't have any gaps in the front or anything, kind of wants to like seal down to the floor, that kind of stuff, I think it would just push. So I pulled out a little bit of the bigger debris, I left some in there, but yeah, let's get started. So like I said, by default, test the carpet, we just push this. That shuts off the brush roll, and now it's ready for dirt floors. As I said, some of that larger stuff, yeah, I just pushed a lot of that. So as you can see, a lot of that bigger stuff just got put. So, I'm going to do... I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'll lift it up because you're going to have to. So if you lift the nozzle up slowly to the side, it'll let the bigger stuff get into the suction channel and then you're good. There we go. Although it still plowed a lot of it, and I did have to lift the nozzle up a couple times, uh, it did grab everything. So there we go, we got a lot of fine dust in there. Turn that back off the suction to birds. A piece of always like. Uh, as a side note, a lot of times when I would use this for like bigger hard floor cleaning jobs, I would pair it up with uh, one of the Dyson hard floor tools. This is the articulating hard floor tool, which I really like. So I'm going to set this up. Actually, I just threw down some coffee, and I'll do a demo of that. So let's just pull this up, and then I've got to hook the tool onto the end. Um, I do have an adapter for it. They gave away adapters for a long time. With a lot of their, uh, with a lot of their models, as they were switching their to a proprietary type. Anyways, uh, let me go ahead and start this. See how it does. I'm gonna spread this around a little bit. Okay. those big teeth in there which helps with uh you know larger stuff it's still real snow plow and you have to pick it up right pick up the nozzle but the things that are about sand consistencies are smaller you find okay. so there you go you can easily uh, have the functionality of a great canister vacuum too again with just one extra attachment so very versatile machine that did a great job So, uh, now that I'm all done cleaning with the dice and I filled up the bin several times, uh, let's take a look at the filter. So, open this up and there's a couple of particles on there. It looks like a piece of hair, but uh, other than that, spotless. There's no sawdust on it, so you can fill this thing up over and over and over and not have to worry about clean washing the filter. And uh, that's another feature I really, really like about this machine. So, it takes forever for it to clog and lose suction and uh, then you just wash it and you're good to go again so yeah it's a great feature all right so to sum up you know the the dc 17 it's a unique model uh where they really improved a lot of things and we only got it in north america uh it does a it's dramatically uh it's a huge jump in carpet cleaning ability over other dyson uprights at the time even the only ones that come close today are their full-size ball uprights, um, which come close, but I don't think they clean as well. They do a better job on bare floors, though. I will give them that. Uh, but on this one, although it still does a decent job on hard floors, uh, just has just snow plows the bigger stuff, but not the end of the world. You got the tools there if you need to get underneath the cabinets or anything like that. Um, but the performance is fantastic. The filtration system is excellent. Uh, and the tools, uh, the tool and lawn setup, I still think is largely unmatched by most modern uprights or current Dysons. So they really hit it out of the park with this one, and I plan to keep it 
uh, in good running shape uh, forever because I want to keep using it. So even though a lot of the parts are discontinued, I will find them if I need them. So yeah, uh, there's the DC-17 model I'm really happy with, the Dyson I'd never get rid of. It's my favorite one. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And thanks for watching and have a great day. As one last note on this, as much as I like it, not perfect. I went to empty this one last time and after all that sawdust and fine dust in there, that gasket at the bottom wanted to get caught on those little bin flaps. Um, they're called baffles, those little plastic tabs sticking up. It's getting caught on the outside of them, wanting to create the critical flaw that these are known for. Um, but I caught it and just if something, if you can kind of work with it a little bit and it's little quirks and problems, uh, then you'll get consistent, excellent performance. Okay, yeah, thanks again.